Todd Shaw with another episode of the Sawdust Dude. Welcome back. So today in this episode, we're going to talk about tools, tools, tools. All the tools that you need to be cool, yeah. Wow. Let's talk about the toolbox. This is kind of uh, what I use. Um, several different things about toolboxes. This is a, a DeWalt. Uh, they make it's called a T stack and they make a uh, stack of old tools I've seen guys use the little carts and it's on wheels obviously um, But you know the most time on a construction site it, It's a muddy mess. I mean up to your knees in mud So the little wheel thing just never really worked out for me It was just a lot easier to keep it down to a compact size like this because you do have some large tools uh, I really like this size so let's take a look at some of the tools that you need and once again we're talking about uh, entry-level carpenters and uh, on a framing crew and so these are just like some of the basic tools that you need kind of in the top of the box here you can kind of see it's divided up in compartments on this I've got uh, I got a chalk line uh, this is one of the oldest tools that you'll use is a piece of string but it's accurate as all get out I mean guys have laser levels and all kind of stuff like that nothing beats a, a chalk line and obviously it's just got a little hook on the end and as you pull it out you can kind of see the chalk come off of it but especially when you're doing roofing and cutting plywood and you need to cut it on an angle because you're cutting out a valley as you go up um, the roof line you know a chalk line just kind of goes from one end to another Wrap your finger around the string, pull it tight. I grab the string first, pull it tight, and then pop. And it'll leave a nice, nice, uh, clear, crisp line. Uh, so the cut man can go through and cut that line out. Also in my toolbox, because that line was kind of thin, I have extra chalk. And as I have extra chalk. And as you can kind of see, it's just just a chalky powder that'll that'll leave a mark like that so they make this in red and blue so um, don't mix your colors all right so anyway chalk line kind of along the same lines uh, as a chalk line I always keep a string uh, in case if we have to pull a line uh, different different sizes of string uh, another real primitive tool but uh, it's still great uh, I found this in an antique store, and this is an old plumb bob. And so you have a mark up top, and uh, you want to transfer that down to below, and that just gravity does this thing, and that thing will center out that plumb bob, and boom, that's your mark. And then you just make a little mark there. So plumb bobs still come in handy. Uh, an old, very old tool since, you know, they built the pyramids, you know, so it's, it's a great tool uh, to use there. Now, open up to the inside. Let's kind of like start from the basics. You're going to need a good hammer. Uh, this is kind of a uh, middle of the road hammer. I don't know, hammers Hammers are measured out in, in, in ounces. Uh, this is probably like a 16 or an 18 ounce hammer. Uh, and uh, you'll get some that framing guys use. The claws will kind of be straighter on it and uh, it's longer handle, so you can just use more leverage on it, and it'll be up, you know, 26, you know, 28 ounce hammer, and uh, you know, I know a lot of guys use nail guns today, but uh, you're still gonna need a hammer, and uh, so just get you a good solid hammer, one that's comfortable with you. Remember, hold it from the, don't be choking up on the hammer, <laughs> and so uh, grab it from the end. So you'll need, still need a good hammer. Speaking of hammers, so this is a hammer. So you know you're uh, you're you're laying up your wall, and uh, you, you you got your marks on on both ends, point A and point B. Well, that can be kind of bowed in the middle, and sometimes you got to kind of push a wall out to get it straight. You've chalked your line, uh, and so you need to move a wall. Well, a lot of times, you know, your other hammer. You'll have to hit on that wood so much that it'll kind of damage the wood and, and bust it all up. Well, it's nothing like a big hammer. This is really like a flooring hammer, but man, this thing gets the job done. I mean, just just a little bump and 
it'll get it back in spot. So I always carried a big hammer with me too. Um, speaking of hammers, sometimes you have to pull nails. And so uh, this is called a uh, cat's paw or a nail puller. I don't know. They just said that looked like a cat's paw. I, I, don't rock the boat. Just go with it, man. Say, sure, whatever. And so, you know, it has little teeth on it here. And so you just kind of take it and you find the nail and you'll dig in like that and then pull the nail and then finish pulling it with your hammer. Uh, so uh, you'll still need a cat's paw or a nail puller. It comes in handy. Let's talk about squares. You got to all the time make straight lines. Well, you'll need two things uh, to make a straight line. Number one is you'll need a pencil. And of course, I'm still old school. Go with the carpenter's pencil because they're, they're flat like that. Uh, and so that makes it real great. If you drop it, it doesn't roll off the roof. <laughs> okay. And I always carry two or three pencils and have a lot in storage. I mean, just buy them by the bundles because you'll always need a good pencil like this. And they even make pencil sharpener, sharpen, sharpeners blah, 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 uh, for the um, carpenter pencil. And so it just fits in that little flat hole like that, obviously. Um, and so you can keep that uh, sharpened. So you'll always need a good sharp, sharp pencil, uh, but I'll, you'll also need a square. I highly recommend this. This is a Swanson Speed, Speed, Swanson Square. Speed Square. These things do so much. I, I love them. And I've always used this. Here's an old one I have up here that's actually cracked. I mean, that thing's like 40-something years old. <laughs> and these things, you can find angles, and there's all types of measurements. And the great thing about the Swanson Speed Square, when you buy them, it'll come with a little blue book, and it'll tell you everything about how to use a speed square. But obviously the simple thing is it just, so you can mark out a straight line and, and it's just quick and easy to use it. And, and so <clears throat> speed square, gotta have one. Framing square. Now usually your lead carpenter or your cut man will, will really use the uh, framing square. But there is a time uh, that you may need one. So always keep a, a framing square is what this is called. And this one's old. I've got the one in my work van that's aluminum. It's easy to see. This was my granddad's and I just keep it around the micro shop. Just kind of like something to pull out and just remember old granddaddy by him. Uh, so I just pull this out. So I wouldn't take this on the job site. It's super heavy. Uh, and if the sun, <laughs> man. You go ahead and grab this thing and it's just like 100 degrees. Thing about a framing square, there's all kind of measurements here. You use it, if you're gonna build a set of uh, step treads, you need a framing square. If you're gonna lay out rafters, uh, cutting the, 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 the uh, getting the, the, the pitch and uh, laying out the rafters and getting the heels all cut out, you're gonna to have to use a framing square. Big thing about the framing square, when you're taking your measurements, remember, this is one set of measurements here. If I take it 10 inches here and I want 10 inches here, a lot of guys will do 10 inches here and then read on the inside. Well, that's a totally different, you have to go with the same 90 degree angle. So remember, it's outside, outside measurement, inside, inside measurement. So frame is square. Let's see what else is in the good box. about uh, chisels you know sometimes you have to chisel out wood uh, whatever reason may come up uh, these are obviously behind me I've got all kind of fine woodworking chisels but these are called utility chisels and man I you know they just take a beating they don't hold a super sharp edge but they're good for just kind of like when you got to chip out a, a piece of wood or whatever to, to get things to line up correctly and because you're framing it's really not finished work uh, so you use uh, different size utility chisels. And so you need a good set of utility chisels. Not finished chisels or butt chisels, but utility chisels. Now, I do have a nice, a nice kind of uh, finishing chisel. Uh, but it's a two inch chisel and guys over the years have kind of hit nails with them and stuff. This thing, I mean, you could, you could shave with it. 
And sometimes this, this really comes in handy. Instead, it doesn't tear the wood, I, and I can control uh, how it cuts. Now, along those lines, sometimes when you're, you got the foundation and the brick masons that left some mortar, you, you don't, or, or a block's too high, you don't want to use a utility chisel. And so you may need a uh, masonry chisel, or a lot of times they're called cold chisels. And I just have this nice, uh, real wide one here, I don't know, about three or four inches wide, and it kind of comes in handy. And it's just great for busting up concrete. Kind of along those same lines, uh, you know, just a little nice pry bar. If you ever got to separate a uh, piece of wood, pull on something. Another little kind of small wrecking bar. Um, it just always comes in handy. So you may need something like that as well. Let's talk about levels. You, normally your lead carpenter will have a, like a four foot level. It's to plumb up walls and everything. Now let's talk about levels here real quickly. This is just a small bullet level. A lot of guys will call this. There's really two marks on here that I just need to know are, are two bubbles. When I hold a level straight up and down and I put it on the side of the wall, that is called plumb, okay? That's a good tip there. Uh, I had a guy called about, um, I was installing some doors and I said, hey man, you know, just these doors, I called the manufacturer, I said, they're just not closing there. I can't get it to adjust out correctly. And he says, well, did you level it when you installed it? I said, yeah, the, the threshold is level. He said, but what about the sides? Are they level? And I'm like, you don't level the sides. That's called plumb. Remember the plumb bob that I was talking about? Straight up and down like that. That's where this term comes from when you take a level and you plumb something out. It is referring back to the days when you use a plumb bob. And therefore, if something was straight up and down, it was plumb. And so same way with the level, when you have the, the lines like this, and I've got my center bubble, that's called plumb. When I take it and I lay it down horizontally, like the horizon, I use this uh, bubble here, and that is level. And so plumb, level, big difference. So a lot of times you just have this bullet level, but most of the time your lead carpenter will have a four foot level or even a six foot level. Comes in real handy on the job site. <clears throat> Always make sure I have a, a cord with me. And a lot of times when you're, you're pulling, uh, getting a, the wall of a house and you'll just attach one end to the other and, uh, and that line like that, you, know, you can get your wall straight so the middle of it doesn't have a bow in or a bow out. And so it's just real simple. Just tacking up a string on the outside from left to right, point A to point B, and making sure all the points in between kind of line up with A and B. And that way you got a good, good straight line. Uh, old school, but man, it works every time. Hey, a lot of carpenters now, are, and really on, on my job, I don't do a lot of remodeling and things like that. And when I have to do framing, I, I just use an impact driver. I, I don't do a lot of uh, pneumatic nail guns and things like that. Uh, this is a tool that I just use all the time. And so uh, a good 20-volt uh, uh, impact driver is what they're called. And uh, it's a little torque bit, and uh, you can use an interior or exterior screws, but for decking and building decks, and so where you're, you're framing out for that, uh, instead of using a nail gun, this takes a little bit more time, but you know, if I have to pull something or, or move um, a, a two by six or two by 12 around, it's a lot easier to back out a screw, and I really like that, that aspect of it, uh, instead of using my cat paw and a hammer and trying to pull nails. Well, kind of along that because you use uh, Phillip head bits and different size torque bits. Uh, DeWalt makes, makes this nice little handy packet here to, to keep your bits in. And I really like that. And even on the end, it's got a, uh, a secret compartment. It's got a secret compartment. So, uh, you know, you're holding an extra extension. And so uh, that comes in real handy as well. So, 
All right, well, let's talk about this, kind of wrapping things up here about tools that you'll need uh, for your apprenticeship program as a carpenter. Uh, the last thing, you kind of, well, not the last thing, kind of one of the most important things that you'll need, kind of like the, the top three, I would say. Um, the next is this, is a good utility knife, uh, something to cut with. Um, these work out so well because it's got a little piece here that I can replace the blade with. And so it's always sharp. So if you're drying in a house on the outside and you're cutting a house wrap or something like that, you know, you're going to need a utility knife to cut that house wrap. Or if you're drying in the roof and you've got the sheeting down and you're putting down the felt paper and you'll need a, need a knife. And go ahead and buy just like a 50 pack of, uh, of good uh, long lasting blades. Uh, this is a uh, a Linux product, Linux blades. They make real good saw blades for your saws all in all, but they uh, heavy duty blades to go along with your utility knife. That's something that you're gonna need. I already talked about the pencil, carpenter's pencil. Get a flat pencil so it doesn't roll off the roof. Get a handful of them. You always keep two or three on you because you're gonna lose one, drop one, you're gonna be on the roof and drop it. And sure enough, you're gonna need another pencil Instead of getting fussed at and screamed at, just have another pencil with you. I tried to tell you, you wouldn't listen. Now let's talk about tape measures. Kind of like the, the, the wrapping up, the number two. Here we go, tape measures. Uh, typically I carry a 25 foot tape measure. Uh, this is nice and wide, so if you're trying to hook it up at the top, and, and something that I need to tell you about, there's different names in different parts of a tape measure. This end right here, this the part that you hook on the end of a um, of some wood or uh, plywood or anything, that's called the dumb end, okay? So don't be surprised when you're laying out and they're like, here, take this tape measure, go all the way down there. And they would call that the dumb end because you don't have to read. Or if you couldn't read a tape measure, uh, you were definitely the dumb end, okay? So don't get your feelings hurt. Just learn how to read a tape measure, okay? That's like number one, okay? And so anyway, tape measure. You'll notice that uh, tape measures, there's all kind of little marks and diamonds and stuff. The big thing that you'll need to know, most of your framing is laid out 16 on center. So you'll see that 16 and 32 and 48 and on and on and on is marked out so that's marked out and that's going to be the center of every stud hey let's talk about this and this is the last thing you got to have a way other than your toolbox to carry your tools around the job site with now back in the days and i found this uh um kind of in the in the cabinet somewhere here in the shop but this is an old cloth nail apron and it it had two pockets okay we had 16 penny nails and I took a piece of half inch PV, uh, inch and a half PVC pipe, drilled two holes in it so I could hang my hammer on the side and, and, uh, and put my tape measure on the other side. And so uh, this is like old school, but you don't want to use these anymore. You need a good uh, durable tool belt. Uh, the more pockets, the better, especially when you're doing uh, on, on a framing crew. Uh, this one here is, is okay. It's obviously got a spot for uh, your hammer and uh, different other little tools here. It's got two pouches, a spot uh, for other little tools. And I also bought this is so I can put my impact driver. And it's got some other little spots so you can put pencils or whatever. Kind of the cool ones are if uh, it's got two pouches here and it's got a center like, uh, like a belt buckle where you put your tape measure. Those are real good unless you're you're a big boy and you got a big tummy and it's always getting in the way. It's well for you, uh, but remember you got to wear a belt on your pants because that stuff's called all day long kind of pulls down on, on your uh, on your pants as well. So uh, a good nice sturdy tool belt. Well, let's talk about workwear real quick quickly. Uh, you know you probably need some gloves, uh, need uh, some safety glasses. Some uh, job sites require a hard hat. Um, and different places, different color hard hats mean certain things. So make sure you get the appropriate attire for uh, your construction site. Uh, but just to ask your uh, lead carpenter or your foreman or your superintendent about that. 
And they'll hook you up. And they may even steer you wrong, but that's okay. You'll learn. <laughs> uh, pants and stuff, you know, carpenter pants, it's got the belt loop and it's got all kind of uh, side pockets. And a lot of times where I talk about, there it is, there's another pencil, you know. So I keep uh, pencils on me. One of the big things, here's some tips for you. Here's some tips for you that you want to hold on to. Um, one, keep your tools organized, uh, even when you put them back in your pockets. Always, the pencil always goes here. My framing square always goes here. My hammer always goes there. And so it's just, it's a natural reaction to grab that stuff instead of sitting around. I lost my pencil. Anybody got a pencil? Boom, I got a backup pencil ready to go. Man, stuff like that, you know, it's just a time waster. Stuff like that, man, you start looking for a pencil or whatever, you know. Man, that, you know, that'll get you in trouble on the job site. You got to be efficient and ready to go all the time. So, uh, man, I told you to stay tuned to the very end because I had some extra bonus tips for you. Well, here you go. Here's some of those bonus tips that will help you on the job site. It's kind of learning the lingo. It's kind of what to do and what not to do. So when you make a mark, you know, a lot of guys will take the tape measure and they're like, they'll do a line like that. It's just a straight line. And so the cut man will go, where am I supposed to cut? Where's your mark? Is it here? Is it here? Is it here? Where's your mark? Well, in carpentry, they have something that's called a crow's foot. And it looks like that. It's just like a V. Kind of. So you'll take your mark and that way, you know exactly that's where the center point, and so when I take my square, when I take my square, I'm just gonna line it up at the tip right there, and then, boom, make my mark, and that's the cut that we wanna do. Well, in construction, a lot of times, especially in framing, you'll hear guys, uh, they really don't use sixteenths in, uh, in framing. It's just an eighth, a quarter, three eighths, you know, a half inch, five eighths, and on and on and on we go. But a lot of times in construction, when you're doing a framing, you'll hear 16 and a quarter and leave the line. Well, this is what that means. Really, they're asking 16 and a quarter and leave the line. Well, it's almost really five sixteenths. They'll say 16 and a quarter and make it heavy. Well, that means you want to leave that line. So when I'm cutting, I've got my saw, uh, actually, if this is my 16 inches here, I'm going to cut on this side line. I'm actually going to leave the line. you got the thickness of your blade of your saw. It's called a curve, which is about an eighth of an inch or so. And so that I will leave the line. In fact, leave it heavy, leave a little space in there. So it's really 16 and 5 sixteenths. Well, you'll hear 16 and a quarter and cut out the line. Well, it's a little shy of a quarter. So it's really about three sixteenths and so on. You see how it goes. So you'll hear uh, cut out the line. Uh, you'll hear leave the line and you'll hear uh, 16 and a quarter and make it heavy or leave the line. So all those little terms like that, you kind of pick up with different construction crews when they're framing uh, actually what all that means. So I hope that helps you out. Thanks for watching the Sawdust Dude. I appreciate you watching this edition of the apprenticeship, carpenter apprenticeship. Tools, tools, tools. Yes, good stuff. So good luck on your journey. Man, let me hear back from you. Give me some feedback. Uh, if there's a question you have, hey, feel free to, to, to shoot me a message. I'll be glad to hook up with you and kind of give you my two cents and uh, kind of help you on, on your journey. Hey, just stay focused. Stay on that journey. Better skills, better results. Thanks again for watching the Sawdust Dude. I'll see you real soon.